I don't usually carry one, but I don't like going out to a potential crime scene where I can't call for help. Today our adventure is going to be about a movie called Frankenfish. At first I was a little weirded out, because of course the first person we see on screen is a black person. Really? We're still doing this trope? As expected, he dies a horrible death. But it's all good they make up for it later, because the main character is a black dude too. He's a detective and his boss tells him to go down to some remote swamp area to check out some incidents there. There he inspects the guy in the beginning that was eaten by something. Horrible gashes that even the inspector was like, I have no idea what those are. But it's definitely some sort of animal. And they get a biologist to go with him to the swamp. Medical examiners carry guns? Oh, I don't usually carry one, but I don't like going out to a potential crime scene where I can't call for help. I completely agree, especially if it's in a remote area, and not to mention, help doesn't usually come on time. The time it takes for somebody to kill you or grab you, you only have a split second to defend yourself, much less to make the call if you're even able to get by a phone, or grab your phone, hopefully you didn't drop it, and make the call and then wait for them to send someone your way and to find you, and hopefully you're still alive by the time they get there. We got a radio. Okay, so, um, good for you. You need to shut the hell up. When we're in trouble, how about this? I'll go off running and defend myself with my firearm, and you can pick up your radio and use that as a weapon. How about that? Needless to say, the radio will be useful if they get stranded out there, but I can already tell you that character gets on my nerves, and out of all the people acting in this movie, she's the worst. It's hot! Let me take off my shirt! I know it seems like I'm nitpicking for a lot of these, and you know what? In some sense, I might be, but I will say she is really freaking annoying. I understand some people aren't experienced when it comes to acting, and I know it's partly the director's fault, but don't people hear themselves? Like, why were there no reshoots? Like, compared to everybody else, she just stands out so badly. Here's an example, and it's embarrassing. I would not use this in her portfolio. Hey, stop the boat. Really? Hey. Stop the boat. What are you, Siri? They tap an alligator <laughs> that looks like it's made of gelatin. First of all, <laughs> alligator skulls are very hard. Oh God, Jesus Christ. Anyway, after they touch the cotton ball gator mannequin, they're like, oh my God, what could have done that? Not a bear. Something chopped its head clean off. While they're investigating, they meet a guy catfishing. They're looking for someone who might be tied to the murder. So he's like, all right, cool, I'll help you out. Just tug my boat and I'll lead you to the person that you need to question. God, who would want to live so far away from everything? Maybe people who are trying to get away from people like you. I'm a person who would like to live very far away from everything because of people like you. Just because it's not your cup of tea doesn't mean it's not everybody else's or other people's. Some of us think it's insane that you want to live in an area where there's people all around you and you're literally neck to neck with houses. Other people don't like that. Shut the hell up and let people have their preferences. So they get to the swamp houses and they meet a couple who are always walking around around naked. Either of you have any ideas about what happened to Mr. Cranky? You know, we feel real sad about what happened to John, but I, I, I tell you the truth. What in the swamp neck? We made a voodoo woman. Why is it in every single one of these? Jesus, it's like a stupid bad movie trope. There's always a crazy witch black lady that does voodoo. Why is it always a black woman who does the voodoo who's the crazy witch person? And why does she always have one freaking clouded over eye? I mean, this trope has been used so many times. It's ridiculous. Of course, we got our pretty daughter, who we know is going to be part of the main cast, and the daughter's boyfriend, who doesn't seem to really get along with the mother because the mother is always throwing shade at him, and I honestly cannot blame him. This woman was the wife of the guy that was killed at the beginning, and she goes on about some voodoo magic stuff, saying there's some kind of great evil in the swamp. She's mad that the police only sent these people, which I'm like, okay, it's an isolated incident in the swamp that looks like an animal attacked him. Not really a reason to bring the whole Calvary, but I understand where she's coming from because it's her pain. But she seems to think there's some great demonic force out there that's more evil than anything. My circle of protection is small, and I told John, not to step outside of it. Okay, lady. Whatever you say. The man can't go fishing. I know what you think. Crazy old witch. Yeah, I never. Yeah, poor Elmer is probably thinking that you are a crazy old witch, and it's not exactly his fault. She gives them some trinkets or beads to protect them, and I'm guessing if she had worried about her husband leaving outside the protection circle, she would have given one of those things too, and judging from the fact he's dead, I don't know, should be a conclusive piece of evidence that they don't work, but whatever. Anyways, the detective tries to get to the bottom of this. He and the biologist and Elmer go out to where there was a strange boat that appeared in the swamp. They claim that that boat is too big to be in the 
the swamp. So it's very rare seeing a boat of that size down here, which is weird because yeah, it's, I mean, it's not that big to me, but I don't live in a swamp. So who knows? When the detective and the biologist go below deck, first of all, they notice the smell and then find a whole bunch of decomposed, badly eaten and torn up bodies. The stupid biologist woman ends up barfing. And then she, after being very calm, hauls back to the boat. People are telling her to be careful. And at this moment, I really hate this character. Like I'm trying hard not to hate the character. Actually, that's a lie. I don't really give a damn. I really do hate the character. I'm trying not to let it bother me as much as it does, but it does bother me. Instead of getting into the boat like a normal person, she launches herself in there like she weighs 400 freaking pounds and ends up sending Elmer flying overboard into the water. I really hate her guts. I hate her guts. So then Elmer ends up getting eaten by this fish thing that's going around the swamp and she's just looking at him like, oh my god, how sad. I wish she had been the one to fall in the water, I swear to god. Elmer was my favorite character, the only real person I liked in this, even the main character. Near the end of the movie gets overwhelmingly annoying and I can't even root for him and I don't know why they made him this way. But the only likable person gets killed off within the first 20 minutes of the movie. Now they realize that there's something under the water killing people. How does it explain the people that were killed in the boat unless the thing in the water can go on the boat because all the bodies are still on the boat. They go back to the stupid voodoo lady. See, bitch, your trinkets didn't work. Thanks a lot. If anything, they probably got us killed. It doesn't take long for us to realize that there's some rich guy who has a whole bunch of henchmen that are responsible for tracking down these things that were released in the water. Some genetically engineered grouper fish or coelacanths or whatever they are. And they're very, very dangerous. I can't show you because it's YouTube, <laughs> but there is a woman who is sitting with her top off and this is like the third or second time that you see something like this and I didn't mind the first one because when the weird couple was on their little boathouse it's clear that the biologist who's with the detective likes girls because she can stop looking at that one and okay whatever that's fine but then this one has the biggest freaking areolas I have ever seen anyway everybody's concerned and they're like maybe those fish are territorial I've not seen any fish like that they even found a scale of the fish and they're like it's bigger than any that I've ever seen but maybe we'll be safe here. Ricardo the guy they were looking for that was said to have been the last one to see the first guy from the intro alive who's actually his really close friend is a hunter who's always sharpening his knife looking for the possibility of another kill. But at first light Mary and I will head back and get some help to take care of this. What is he doing? <laughs> Is he getting ready to give the machete head? Why did he spit on it before? <laughs> This movie's weird. Later on, they have dinner because the detective did say that with the biologist, he's gonna go back at first light to go back and get help or whatever the hell is they're planning on doing. And also to try and figure out what the hell these animals are that are killing people. This dinner scene is the most uncomfortable scene. And this is where I start to kind of hate the main characters, like the pretty girl who is the daughter of the voodoo chick and the main character himself. As handsome as he is, he becomes a little bit of a dick bag. But around this time, I still kind of liked him because he was kind of humble and he obviously grew up from here. He said the meal's nice and the biologist loses her shit because I guess being someone who's traveled a lot you've never heard of people eating something other than chicken and pork. Snap and turtle? He is. Excuse me. Why is that so shocking? It's cooked and you were kind of sort of enjoying it, so why does it matter? I think the only thing I'd be shocked about at this point if I realized I was eating it and it was cooked very well and it was really good is if it were a human being. And I've heard from somewhere, from like four people removed, that humans taste like pork. I don't know who lended that evidence, but if I was appalled because I'm like, ew, we shouldn't be eating them, I still would be like, you know what? I mean, it was kind of good, very immoral, but I gotta admit, that was some good ass human. You never missed a pride visit. Is this the boy you told me about? <laughs> Crush on this one boy. And at this point, I don't even like this main character because she is in a relationship. Didn't even realize she was in a relationship with the other guy. And this was her high school crush. And she just completely forgets that she's with someone who is sitting at the dinner table with them actively right now. The mother herself is so disgusting and starts to insinuate, oh my God, she liked you. And she's like the biggest crush on this one guy. Like so disrespectful to the boyfriend who they treat like a complete buffoon for the entirety of this movie. <laughs> High school. She asked me to put magic on him once. Really? Oh yeah. 
Wow. Imagine. I don't even understand that. I've heard of that stuff of people putting hexes on people for them to love you. Why would you even want that? Like, in your mind, the person loves you and you brought, you made a spell. So it's not because the person actually loves you. It's because you put a spell on them to like you. What happens when that spell wears off? And even if it never does, how can you even feel good knowing that that's not true love? It's pretty disgusting. And if one person puts a hex on one person, let's just say this girl likes this guy, our main character character puts a hex on him what happens if another girl or a more powerful witch puts a hex on him too that she wants him and then you know vice versa or going down the line or the food chain of the stronger witches or whoever's spell tastes the best at what point like you know what i'm saying like somebody could just come and say yeah i have a bigger spell than you and now i have him whereas if he actually did just like you chances are he would be faithful or maybe he wouldn't when he realizes that you're a cold-hearted bitch can't do something like that for a girl at that age. <clears throat> Not that it would have turned out any worse, mind you. Okay, you know, that's really nice. That comment's about me, isn't it? <clears throat> wow. I understand his reason for being so concerned and so disrespected. Not only has he been disrespected the entire evening by her mother, but then this bitch takes him outside and tells him he's being rude. I'm sorry, but if my parents, like, yeah, you're supposed to be respectful to my parents, but if my parents are actually disrespecting somebody that I'm with, especially actively while they're there, I'm sorry, I don't care if you're my parent. I would be like, listen, if you'd like, I can just leave. Or please, mom and dad, do not treat him that way because you disrespecting him is actually disrespecting me. But no, she blames him. And then she says this, which is why I do not like the character. You implied that my assistance was essential in order for our dating relationship to progress. And you knew I had a motorboat, sweetheart. The request was therefore implicit. I should have never hooked up with a lawyer. You should have never dated a lawyer? Really? Is it because you can't win an argument with him, bitch? Funny how she starts acting up when her high school crush that she knows nothing about comes along. Not like you haven't seen each other in years and you don't know the kind of person he is now, but oh well. Let's see how happy she's gonna be when she finds out that she ends up marrying a detective who probably is never home or has time for her. That would be hilarious if that ended in divorce. Because your lawyer boyfriend still came out here despite not wanting to to support you and because he liked you. Right? <laughs> This guy is so far out of her league, it's not even funny. She may be attractive, but there is a reason why certain people of a certain class of financial status stay with certain people in that status. Anyway, the biologist wastes no time trying to hit on the girl when she's barely broken up with that guy. And the attractive girl answers her by saying, listen, regardless if it's girl or boy, you always end up with some amount of time between someone's legs. And that turns the biologist girl right off. Because clearly, she can see, oh, now I understand why nobody wants to be with you. You are a piece of shit. Girl, and just keep on bickering with your white devil there. <laughs> Excuse me. You know, I really appreciate that. You know, that see, that's exactly the kind of attitude that got what me out of the What kind of war. tea, ma? White devil? Wow, what a racist bitch. And I don't know about you, but to me, he looks freaking Jewish, but I don't know. He certainly doesn't look white to me. Don't worry, dude, you dodged a freaking big ass bullet. She asked her mom what tea did she just make for her high school sweetheart. And she's like, oh, that was just special recipe. Probably that Cupid spell. So the Jewish looking guy dodges that bullet, which is about to hit the main character, who by the end of the movie, I am pretty certain he deserves it. What a wonderful mother and host. Not like your daughter wasn't of age when she chose to go out with this person and take him back home here. I swear to God, the mother feels like the villain of the story and closer to the end, you'll see why. Anyway, next door on the other floating houseboat, the stoner couple starts to investigate the water. I don't know why the guy with the dreads is trying with the flashlight to see what's inside the water. The water's murky, bro. No matter how long you stand there, you're not gonna see anything. It's like he's asking to be eaten. Even if he did not know what was in the water, why the hell would you do that? Do you guys not have gators there? Do you not know that gators, just like crocodiles, can ambush their prey? You can't be living in a swamp and not know that shit. And I don't care how stoned you are, that should be basic muscle memory right there. <laughs> How wonderful, he gets his head chopped off. And you know what, I do not feel sorry for him because clearly that's what he wanted. <sighs> Stupid ass movie. Everyone comes out and they're like, oh my God, what's happening? And they see the guy's dead body. So his wife gets in a boat trying to get to their side. Lady, what the shit are you doing? Clearly, if that stuff really worked, we wouldn't have a headless man on the boat now, would we? Anyway, the new widow goes into the boat trying her hardest to get away. And then something pulls the boat and knocks her out of it. Nobody had one of those 
those stupid things with the circle donut things on the end to throw at her? I mean, I know that probably wouldn't have been long enough, but judging from the fact that you're all, <laughs> I don't know, surrounded by freaking water, you would think that you have lifesavers around, but I guess not. Sucks if you're far out in the middle of nowhere, in the middle of literally a freaking swamp, and there's nobody that can come and save you, have the least amount of life-saving things as possible. Of course, our handsome, golden boy, perfect main character takes the lead, and he's like, let's get in one of the boats to get help, and Ricardo doesn't want to go because he's like, oh, no, 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 no. No, I'm staying here with my machetes. If anything, I'm gonna chop up that fish, and we're gonna have some dinner tonight. The lawyer guy is, like, the only smartest person Person of the bunch and he's like I'm not getting that freaking boat look at what it's a bobby the thing can jump out of the water and drag a grown human underneath <laughs> plus we have dead bodies on a boat back there yeah I'm gonna stay up here where it's a little bit safer and I'm not like literally a sitting duck okay you're not literally but metaphorically a sitting duck Uh-huh. Wonder what would have happened if you were still in the boat, main character. It's attacking everything that moves. Thank you, ass crack, for the fucking unnecessary narration. We can see that. Anyway, the stupid big supersized fish that I'm guessing are called Frankenfish because the title of the movie start overturning all the boats. So they leave everyone stranded. Understandably, the Jewish dude is like, uh, this doesn't look so good, and he's starting to kind of panic. Oh man, we are fucking fish food. Shut up. I understand that the main character is frustrated and everyone's frustrated, and rightfully so, he doesn't want anyone putting any negative, panicky energy out there. I get that, but he comes off a very macho and toxic alpha male individual. Like, a real leader would have been like, listen, dude, listen, pull him to the side and say, get your act together, all right? These women are depending on us, and I know you're scared, but that's not gonna help us right now. But the entire time, he bullies this guy. Anytime he says anything, it doesn't even matter what it is. It's like, in his mind, he's like, uh-huh, now your girl likes me. I got your girl, so I, I gotta swing my dick around and beat your cheeks with it. Here, taste that dick. Like, dude. <laughs> Anyways, they come up with the solution. Actually, our handsome main character comes up with the solution. He's like, look, the boat next door, Bobby's boat, the couple that's dead, I think theirs is a row home. So technically, if we can get the engine working, we can roll our way out of here and we'll have a little bit more of a chance since it's so large. Maybe those freaking frankenfish can't get to it. Everyone's kind of worried because they're like, wait, you're going to try and sail across in a bucket to the other side <laughs> on a clothesline? Like, I mean, I understand why people are worried. Well, I'm the smallest one and I'm not getting in that. Nobody asked your dumb ass. Why would you even volunteer that information? Just say you're not getting in it. Oh, I'm the smallest one, but I'm not getting in it. Nobody asked you. Nobody fucking asked you. God, I hate that character so freaking much. So pretty girl main character is like, I can do it. And her mom's like, yeah, but you were 12 and 13 when you used to. You're not 12 and 13 anymore. And she's like, yeah, this ass may be fat, but I still got it. All I gotta do is get the bucket to grab it real tight and I'll be able to slide right across. Ma, don't worry. So of course, something happens and a pretty girl main character almost falls into the water and her mom I, I swear to God, I feel like her mom's a villain because her mom is such a horrible actor as a mother. My mother and I have had her differences. But one thing I will say, as much as my mom has her issues with her abusive past, I know for certain that she would risk her life to save me and my brothers. I do know that. I know that my mom would do that so much to the point where she would foolishly, she and my father, would foolishly jump in the water to get themselves eaten to save me. And I would not want that to happen. But at the least, I would hope that someone would have the sense enough to make a lot of noise or drop something else in the water so that the thing can get distracted. Wow, you looked really concerned. Anyway, Ricardo, I think, is the one who had fired off the shots that killed the fish. And I already know, with this being only a tiny bit past the halfway mark, that that was not going to be the only fish. Either it was going to come back to life or something, or there's more. Because in these kind of asylum-like movies, there's always more than one of these freaking river monsters. It's just the way it is. So Ricardo's badass is like, I'm going to ramble this shit, I'm going to get that fish. And Ricardo's actually one of my favorite characters. And I tried my hardest not to hope too much that he come out alive because these movies tend to do that too. They'll take someone who you think is gonna win and they'll kill them anyway for no good reason. Liza, the pretty girl, tries to get the boat working, but unfortunately, the stoner couple cared more about being stoned than fixing their actual boat. So it's a wash. And she doesn't know how to fix it, and I'm guessing nobody does either.
Ricardo starts doing some fishing. I love Ricardo. And he gets the creature after it almost gets him. And then he starts cooking it, cuts out its heart, and eats it. And says it was for his brother, who was the guy that got killed in the very beginning of the movie. I don't know why everyone's so shocked that he's eating it. It's just a freaking fish. Like, it's not like they weren't eating that not long ago. They were eating turtle, but he's surprised because he's eating a freaking fish. Oh, well. Of course, what's more surprising is that another fish comes out and they figure out, oh my god, it can actually walk on land and it tears open Ricardo, which is so unrealistic. And does no one have any reflexes in this movie? Ricardo is a hunter, and you're outrun by a goddamn fish. Anyway, the fish ends up knocking over the grill, taking Ricardo's body in the water, and everyone's like, oh no, we lost our Rambo. What are we gonna do? Those trinkets are really working for you, ain't they, Grandma? Pretty girl of the voodoo witch's daughter uh, tries to wash off her stuff, and the blood pours into the water, and the fish is like... Mmm, that smells amazing. I'm gonna turn into Bruce from Nemo and head on to land over there to get a piece of whatever's bleeding and starts to attack her. She is forced to go to the roof of the row home because yes, these things can walk on land and can breathe out of the water. I know how we can get out of here. All we have to do is get over to Ricardo's and Biologist is shot in the freaking face before she can tell them her plan. And I actually asked that question online, like if that could really happen, you heat your firearm enough and what is in the chamber? Yeah, apparently that is realistic. I'm guessing it had birdshot in it because the angle seems a little bit wrong to me. Does birdshot do that to your face? I don't know. So she dies and I can't say I particularly care. The house shot her. This is insane! Oh my god, main character. Look, I understand he's trying to keep the guy calm and keep him quiet and bring him back to reality, but for some reason, along the line of him stealing his girlfriend and all of that, I start disliking him a bit. Like, the only thing the guy really has going for him is his good looks and plot armor. This movie's a comedy because <laughs> the fuel cylinder or whatever that thing is, uh, kerosene, I don't know what's inside of it, but it's gas-oriented or fuel-oriented. It explodes and lands directly on the motorboat home that they probably could have fixed if somebody else was able to get over to fix the engine and the other girls on it. It's almost like it's almost like I'm watching an offset of Final Destination where these people are just destined to die. <laughs> So the houseboat explodes with the girl on it and she is cast into the water in one freaking piece and he jumps in after her. Really? She's the one that you jump in after? Okay, whatever. How brave of you. You wouldn't do that for Bobby. Look, because this girl said she liked you all of a sudden you're willing to risk your life for her? Really? Oh well. Dick energy is a powerful thing, I'm guessing. Why is her mother not the one that jumped into the water? How is it she's still in one piece with not a scratch after getting blown up like- <sighs> Anyway, the mother's like, let me finally be a mom and try to put some blood in the water so I can lead the fish away from my child. The fish launches on land, and this part I don't understand. The mother, the voodoo woman, is like, come on, and the Jewish guy is like, come on. <laughs> She's going up the ladder. Honestly, you're lucky. That white devil that you were so hateful towards is the one you were depending on to save your life. I wouldn't have blamed him if he was like, you know what, whoops, I think the ladder fell. My bad. But he's a decent human being, and regardless of her being so mean to him, he knows that her life is still valuable. And she should have made it. I looked back at the scene and played it frame by frame, and the thing knocked the ladder away, but I guess she's made of freaking sponge or glass, because somehow her body is torn in half when the thing knocks off the ladder. Like your body's supposed to flex under those conditions, but I guess it knocked her so hard that while her legs were still on the ladder, it tore them off, which I mean, <laughs> the fact that her feet were off the ladder when the thing hit the ladder away, or maybe it took her legs. I don't freaking know. It just made no sense to me. And she bleeds out in front of the guy and the thing, the freaking movie so disgustingly, annoyingly bad. The daughter is okay. And without a scratch after the house exploded with her on it, mind you, but whatever. Then the fish are somehow intelligent enough to start sinking all of the swamp homes. How do they know to do that? I don't know. Handsome main character gets a flare because they might need it for later. And then a boat shows up for the guys that were tracking this fish in the first place. 
guys. Turns out that these guys and their boss are responsible for genetically engineering Chinese snakeheads because the guy wanted something that would be fun to hunt and challenging. Something that not even they can control. The Chinese snakehead is already an invasive species, so to make something that is basically Godzilla tier that cannot be killed very easily just seems very odd. And I know it was a mistake that they escaped, but did they not test the fish in a secure facility before they decided to ship them? I never understand the motivations for these villains in these movies, and honestly, this movie is making me feel like I need to go and drink milk. As a matter of fact, I'll probably go do that right now. Almost all his men end up dying, and he takes the survivors away on his swamp boat so they can track the other fish. You don't waste any time, do you? Shut up, Dan. Wow, I swear... <laughs> I want to make her fall off the boat so she could get eaten by the fish. What a freaking gold digger. Like, let's face it, that's the only reason she was probably with him. How can you have just broken up with someone else in a dangerous situation like this, and you're there spooning with another person right in front of that person? If Dan had done that to her, everyone would have been like, he's a piece of shit, look at what he's doing. Yeah, I hope he would die, but somehow it's okay for our little main characters because of plot armor, and because of what reason? This woman feels like the villain in the story. Her and her freaking dead-ass mother. What? Morning, you dude. She doesn't put out nearly as quickly as you Shut think. up, Dan. Oh, don't worry. You'll get yours too, handsome main character, because that woman who was gold digging to be with someone brought him home to a hateful mother and tried to freaking drug you so you could fall in love with her is going to be the bane of your existence. Dan tried to save your freaking life, and 10 years down the line, she's gonna have your kids, and she's either gonna cheat on you with someone else and move on very quickly like she just did now, or she's gonna make your life freaking miserable and take you for everything that you have. All because it's a pretty face of someone who said they had a crush on you during high school and tried to drug you into falling in love with them. Wonderful dating girlfriend material. Wonderful wife material too. I'm actually very happy with this outcome because they deserve each other. And I know it's not gonna end with a happy ending with And I don't even wanna hear, oh, she just lost her mom, so she's hurting. Yeah, she's hurting. But when everything is over, all she can think about is making out with her new boyfriend and them laughing and having fun and planning their future together like her mom didn't just die or something. I guess lovers are not the only thing she moves on from quickly. I was gonna say the lesbian chick that hit on her dodged a huge bullet too, but <laughs> she kind of didn't. <laughs> Him. Anyway, the Fisher guys find an underground lair and they force the handsome main character to come out and use him as bait. This is all part of the hunt, but apparently they didn't realize just how dangerous these things are. And the male version of this monster fish is in the lair and ends up chasing them and killing the guys. While the monstrous fish is giving chase to them, Jan falls out and we're like, yes, he's okay. At least something's gonna happen to him. Handsome main character ends up chopping up the fish in the propellers and all is well. He saved the day and they couldn't let well enough alone. They they just could not. They try to swim back to get Dan, and Dan is fine, but he's hurt. And of course, the fish had a whole bunch of babies, and they devour Dan whole, because they just could not let Dan walk away alive. I don't know why they hate this, this character so much, like he hasn't done anything. If anything, he was a victim of something horrible. He is the main character in the creepypasta stories I listened to, that made a horrible mistake, and now they're in a situation writing all of what happened to them in the last few days down, in their phone or on a Reddit forum, which is very unrealistic because how much time would they've had to do that instead of writing a note to their mother? And then the story ends with us knowing that they're going to die shortly after it ends. It wasn't the worst stupid movie I've seen, but it definitely was horrible. And it's not a lot of times I've seen a movie where I loathe the main characters. I started off liking them, but then I started hating them. And I ended with liking the more annoying characters and hating the ones that we were supposed to be rooting for. I hope when they go back there, the fish all gang up on them like a bunch of piranhas and eat them whole as well. There, nobody makes it out alive. Thanks for watching. This has been Old Jury. You ask, we answer.